I think part of this is, you know, starting to look at why did we get here? People really quit caring about quality. Well, I, you know, uh, I would argue that because, you know, as you know, prices of there's price and substitution, right? Yeah. Uh, there's the, the issue We're comes throw, down turn to into a throwaway generation, though. You look at someone like my grandparents age. They were the type of people that valued quality and they didn't throw things away. Right, they would repurpose. Well, did they have the same set of options? That's the question too. That's all. That and is so, the question. Uh, I get your point, right? Yeah. I guess I'm. I'm usually. Uh, I try to be slow to make the, um, generalizations about like. Well, I, ask, I ask myself why has stuff gone overseas? Everyone wants to say, well, we need stuff made in America. It's like, well, as a culture, we have driven the demand overseas because we want cheaper products. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, that's, that's part of the, what's snuck in there is the impression of what a middle-class standard of living is has gone up, right? It has. Houses are bigger. People want vacations. They want nicer cars. It is standard that people have a smartphone in their hand and broadband internet, right? These are all things that have become expectations. So there has been an expansion of lifestyle expectation, mm -hmm. even if it's hard to reach. Okay. The American dream has but, grown to a more expensive level. Well, we've also had policy creep, okay? So policy creep, let, let, let me be really that. clear. I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus when I talk about this. I'm just going to talk about how policy creep sneaks in. Let's say that you have uh, employees that form a union, okay? There, there's rights to do that, and there's oftentimes good reasons to do so. But the union then limits the amount of productivity that... A, a person is allowed to produce for the business. And they say, this is the capitation on what we will produce. Like at the docks, this is the throughput. This is the number of units that we You're allow saying through. they cap their production out. They cap yeah. the production, yeah. which in, in essence constrains the labor market artificially, right? So this isn't a capitalist feature, right? This is a, um, it's, it's a free-ish market. There's still components that are free, but then there are components that are not. Layer enough of those ish components into a marketplace and you start to get sluggish in certain areas. You start to drive costs and imbalances. Especially when the government starts to meddle in free enterprise. Well, and, and that's a big portion of it is I think whether it was intentional or not, the government is in a position where it's oftentimes competing with the private sector and it creates an imbalance that looks less capitalistic, which means you get less ability. So you start price fixing and that breaks things, right? So one of the solutions is, well, if we can't control the price of labor domestically, send it somewhere else where there's lower cost of regulation mm -hmm. and then bring the product back because it actually is economically viable. Right. Right. And I don't know that that's a quality statement as much as a we can't sell enough items at this labor unit price to make it work. Now, certain areas uh, like like uh, let's use dock working as an example. I, I don't know much about it. Right. So, I, I, you know, I'm kind of just talking generically about this, but you kind of have to go through the port. Right. If you're shipping stuff over, it's yeah. going through so they can constrain the, the productivity and that simply becomes a cost of doing business and it drives the price up, right? Because right. If, you, if you reduce productivity artificially, it does drive the price up because there's they, they have a monopoly on the dock, right? You have to go through them, okay? And so that's the issue. It's kind of like power companies. It's like, well, you can't go negotiate your power bill, right? You get what they tell you because it's a monopoly on who's providing it or, or it's very, very small oligopoly of providers. Right. And the government's kind of involved in the price structure too. Right, because they approve the yeah. price increase. So these aren't really free capital markets. And I get that we don't necessarily want completely free markets. I know that sounds crazy to have a, a you know, capitalist guy like me on here say that, but unrestrained capitalism moves toward monopolies, mm -hmm. right? And monopolies stop being capitalists. Right, because, right? because then they monopolies. can set the price, yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, there's got to be some way to prevent monopolies from breaking capitalism. But there, what we seem to have done is a poor job of keeping the regulatory bloat from also choking capitalism. And, and now it's created a whole new set of problems in our economy. It has. It has.